um, we kind of skip a little bit because uh, you know okay. Baron's war straight away uh, because uh, we try to understand you know how the process works and stuff. But hmm. uh, you know you are at Warlord, you have successful with your first game. And uh, what then do you, do you become? Uh, uh, do you get uh, involved in food source straight away, or do you leave uh, Warlord because of that? Or yeah, I'd, we. I spoke to John Stallard, who, who was obviously the owner of Warlord. I, I had the opportunity to buy the UK arm of Futsal. So uh, Mark and I, again, have been friends for probably nearly 30 years. Uh, again, Games Workshop, Mark, I knew Mark from Aikido as well. So we were we used to go walking a lot together. He'll tell you the story sometime. He's a lot. He, he I find it funny. He's I don't think he finds it as funny, but <laughs> uh, I we went for a walk up in the Peak District, and I we both had a bit of money. It wasn't a lot at the time, you know, if you think about it. Uh, but it, you know, it was a bit of spare cash, and I said, "Oh, what should we invest in?" And it, it, you know, do you got some? Do you want to invest in a a toy soldier company? And it, it, that was. You know, 14-year-old Andy being able to make his own toy soldiers is like a dream, if I'm being honest. Uh, and because Futsal had uh, all that kind of dark age period, which I really liked, uh, it was like kind of like a, great, a really good opportunity to buy in to uh, something that I thought could be a lot of fun. But I was very transparent about it with Warlord at the time. And uh, Mark and I, in the end, got a deal, and we we started running Futsal UK, which was one casting machine, some molds in a in a rundown unit in the middle of nowhere. Uh, which it was, if I'm being honest, it was kind of circling the drain a bit. Now that in on reflection, uh, not not anything to do with the guy who created it, Bill Thornhill. He was the uh, he, he created it with musketeer miniatures, but the guy, you know, the stuff in the UK, I, I just think it kind of got left behind. So it was, it was just such a really good opportunity for us to uh, to nab. So we did, and then uh, it just kind of grew out of there. You know, Mark, one of us had to give up our job to go in and run it, and Mark, Mark decided to do that. Okay. And uh, it was a bit of a gamble, bless him, and it it, it has paid off. So. So that's how we got into futsal, and at that point as well, uh, I think you know the reality is I think John was very noble to allow me to have my own toy soldier company while I was working for a toy soldier company. But it then we it kind of gets. Fair play, I was still working at Warlord. Yeah, 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 yeah. And and you know I was I was like, oh we could a bit of synergy a bit of crossover. You haven't got Dark Ages. Maybe we can do this. But the reality is, I you know, I think he he was very noble, but it 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 kind of didn't work, I don't think. And at that point, you know, it was the right thing to do was to really to to leave. Yeah. So, so uh, and he he was good. I mean, they they let me stay for about a year, you know, while we were we were doing it all. So it was a it was a good idea. But in the end, I think we were. You know, my mind, they were kind of going this way. My, my mind was going that way. And uh, maybe, I mean, I was at Warlord for uh, seven, eight years. So a long time. Uh, I think maybe my time was naturally cut. You know, I may, you know, you could you could argue I wouldn't have got involved with Futsal Miniatures if I was 100% happy doing what I was doing, you know, that kind of thing. So I don't know, but maybe it was just kind of telling me. And I think... You know, John. John was uh, gracious enough to let me uh, work that out. That's amazing. So yeah, it was, it was very good of him. So, and uh -huh. sorry. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. So then. So then I left, and the idea was for me to go and work at Futsal with Mark, and it didn't get enough traction. So it could kind of pay for one of us, but it couldn't pay for two of us. So and then I had to go and start freelancing and doing other work. So, so you get uh, you you get futsal, and in your um, head, it's a toy uh, company. You produce miniatures, or do you think, oh, let me um, do gang of Ro gangs of Rome? Uh, uh, where the where, oh, yeah, yeah. where gaming comes I, into it? Do you know what? Well, I had no idea. <laughs> if I'm being honest, I just think I like the uh, uh, you know, test of honor was still with 
uh, warlord and would be for another year or so. Uh, I had no idea what I was going to do. I just liked the idea that we have we soldier company. I think my, I, you could call it maybe a bit of arrogance. You know, uh, I'd been in the industry by this point for 20 odd years. And I thought I knew how to run a toy soldier company because I'd worked at GW, I'd worked at Warlord, you know, I knew toy soldiers, I'd been around it all this time. And uh, it became very apparent very quickly when we got to Futsal that I knew nothing. You know, I knew how I knew how to make a mold. I knew, you know, the metal I could pour, you know, figures I could pick, pack, and dispatch figures. But the reality of everything else that goes with it is there's a lot, is a lot. And uh, in that space, uh, in the historical space, there's a lot of people competing. Mm -hmm. So uh, it became very, uh, very difficult very quickly, I think. And both Mark and I were quite uh, altruistic at the beginning. And, you know, we were like, uh, you know, a uh, uh, raising tide lifts all ships. Let's help everybody. You know, that feeling wasn't the same around for everybody. So mm -hmm. it's that kind of thing where we didn't have loads of money when we went in. Uh, we thought the business would generate it, but making metal toy soldiers is very expensive. And uh, making a game is very expensive you know so all of those things we we'd not had the experience of it so even though we'd done i'd done test of honor with graham at uh at uh warlord i wasn't involved in how much it costs to make a game how much margin you need to create all of that you know real world stuff that you needed i had no idea of it just so when stuff. we yeah we just did it and i just thought you know well we'll make it work it'll be great yeah we know what we're doing Woo uh and then uh, a chap called Darren Evans came to work with us. Uh, he was a warlord and GW, so it's all very incestuous to come and uh, help Mark. So he was doing all the day-to-day -day stuff and he had the idea for Gangs of Rome. So it was something that he'd been toying with. He's a real great fan of Rome. He liked this idea of this Necromunda Mordheim type game set in Rome of a Roman background. <laughs> Uh, because I, I didn't know this at the time when he came, there really were gangs in Rome. You know, that's how it how it was. And there was this real underbelly where, you know, senators, et cetera, had gangs and they'd control it. And that's the kind of thing. So he came with the, the story and an idea. And we took that and we we ran with it and, and created gangs of Rome. Uh, but what we did at the same time was we also, uh, so that so that came out and then we came, we did a box set. So it was really successful, the first one. We did a box set. Again, we totally priced the box set wrong. We put loads of metal in there. Sold out really well because it was a really good deal. Sold it at Salute. And that gave Footsore a leg up. So it kind of, people began to notice us, etc. And then we moved on to do Mortal Gods. And we did Mortal Gods uh, because I like, I, the one of one of the other things for me around historical uh, gaming and historical you know warfare is iconic warriors. So the samurai is very iconic. The knight is very iconic. The hoplite is very iconic. And I kind of like you know my wife's Greek Cypriot. We go to we've been to Greece a lot. I've got a, a good ground in all of all of the background of Greece. So that's I have a real love for that as well. So I thought. But I hate, but I hate hoplites. This idea of this all lining up in a massive phalanx, march, 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 push, push, push. You know, the strongest steamrolls the other one, and and you know, I don't want to bloody paint a hundred hoplites, you know, for one block. So I thought maybe uh, they there was another way they fought, and I found out about this idea of uh, uh, called a locos, which was like a scouting group. And they would be at the ends of the army and there'd be some, you know, heroes in there and they'd, they'd take some lighter troops and it'd be like a little war band that went on reckeys and protected the side of their thing. So then I just took that and created a game. But Gangs of Rome was okay because a lot of what went in, in it was metal and it was a thin book. What we did for Mortal Gods was a lot more. We did a deal with Victrix. We put loads of plastics in. We did cards. We created this box. It was a beautiful, beautiful thing. Uh, but again, going back to not having a clue really how to run a business, uh, we worked out, we had a budget to, uh, 
design and the, the game. We didn't have a budget to create the game. So, and we and we thought, oh, you know, you, you know, this is the budget; it will cover everything. But the cost of bringing something like Mortal Gods ourselves to the market was forty thousand pounds. You know, so the card decks, all all the art, all the books, all the figures, buying the plastics in, we had to buy them in bulk. All of those things. It was forty thousand. We didn't have forty thousand pounds, mm -hmm. so that was a lot of money. And on top of that, we were late releasing uh, Bread and Circus, which was the second Gangs of Rome box set. So they both kind of came at the same time. So there was a cost to that, a cost to this, and we nearly bankrupted ourselves. Wow. And that and that was a that was a real real lesson for Mark and I. You know, uh, it was a real out, and it was it, we we had a real soul search over what we were doing. You know, to the point where we were like, well, we might both have to go and get a loan, you know, to cover the business. The business is going to go if we, you know, if we need to to hit these these numbers. Because I'm not thought that you need to buy ten thousand pounds worth of tops and bottoms for. I know it sounds ridiculous now, tops and bottoms for a game, or for a rule book, or you know, having a thousand sets of cards done or two thousand sets of cards done, printed, cut, stacked, shrink wrapped was five thousand pounds. You know, you know, never, never crossed my mind. So, uh, and I thought we could afford it. You know, I just thought it could be done. But then also having that, you know, the profit in your business to go and spend on something like that. And that, that was, that nearly totally broke us, you know. Wow. So that was a real eye, that, that, that and that was a real eye opener for me. And that made us sit down and it gave us, it, it was a real tough lesson to learn. And this is again why, Baron's Wall has been such a success for us because the reality is now we're not a big company. So what we should have done is we should have taken more gods to Kickstarter. Right. You know, and see if there was an appetite for it. Uh -huh. So, you know, people say, well, if you believe in your game, you know, take the risk. And it's like, no, <laughs> you, you help me do it. You know, I'll pay so much. We'll pay to get us to here. But yeah. if you really want it, then you back us and you, it makes a game for a community. And this is why I'm sure I've said it to you. This is why I always say Baron's Wars are game. Because once it's done and it's out there, you, you've invested time and effort into it. You know, lots of people who come to the events, invest time and effort into it and give feedback and they paint. And as soon as it's gone, it's our game. And if you, if you uh, invest your hard earned money in, in stuff that we produce, we should, support that and create a community around it otherwise we're just we're just salesmen uh -huh. and again this this kind of thing made me realize that so uh yeah it's it, it's it's it, it's difficult to create it's not well it's, no it's wrong it's really i i have so many ideas but you know I the good thing is fun. the good thing is that that i had that lesson yeah because i'd probably i'd probably be living in a tent in the garden now because i would have just spent all my money <laughs> <laughs> spent all my money on these ideas and it's creating the right ideas at the right time mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. wow yeah that's kind of a kind of a journey uh to be honest and uh some of the questions i meant to ask you answer answered already uh especially the one about mm. community it's interesting that it comes from a lesson uh you know about how to run business because you actually out there uh, for every of your game and you support um, uh, your games uh, quite a lot. You are out the, on the events and players yeah. can talk to you and stuff. Uh, that's pretty crucial. I think that's why um, it makes uh, Futsal so special to us players uh, as well mm. because of that. Um, right, so 2023 is ending. It was yeah, a year, I I believe. Uh, yeah, it's great. I've been a fabulous year. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you know, we just we've just gone round and redone Gangs of Rome, exactly. which uh, will be for backers in January, and then we'll be taking it and releasing it salute in April. So mm -hmm. we're really we're really pre And this is you know this is when we talk about the Gangs of Rome, Mortal Gods episode we had that we're now here at the end of 2023 we've done our first a4 hardback full color book uh and 
our first plastic frame. Yeah. You know, so that's a massive, you know, move move forwards for us, I think. Uh, but that that's been collaborate, being able to collaborate and also, you know, people supporting us through Kickstarter. So what's gonna happen in uh, 2024? What's uh, what's out there? What's the plan? So you said you are not doing Kickstarters at the moment. Is that uh, still the case or? Oh, me personally, or yeah. I, well, know, in general, I, I'm asking it's... about futsal, but we can ask about, uh, you know. Yeah, about... futsal, futsal I, I, there is, there is a, uh, it's difficult because obviously I own half a futsal. So, but I get to steer. I don't, you know, like I say, I don't work there. So, Futsal are going to go to Kickstarter early 24 with Vikings, which they've been... Right. How could I forget that? They've been, I was actually they've been working on... It's, it's amazing. They've been working on it for about the last 18 months with Matt okay. Bickley. And Mark and Matt have been working on it together. And we've currently, at Futsal, I've seen about 70-something Vikings. Uh, I think yeah. they're looking. They want. To, they want to release a hundred. Is what the plan is. I don't know if they'll get there, uh, but it's it's a really real comprehensive range of Vikings, and they're going to cover lots of different things. So they'll be metal. Uh, they'll be metal. Yeah, they'll be they'll be metal. So uh, it, they like they did for the Welsh, which which was footsore. Uh, and Matt did a lot of late Saxons for Anglo Danes for uh, futsal, so they'll kind of kind of come under there. I think what what Mark wants Matt to do is he wants him to recreate this whole uh, dark age. I call it dark age period for us. So there's a load of stuff he wants to do, and I I. Uh, I've had long discussions with Mark, and I would like to do a conquest book to go with all of that at some point. That would be amazing. So, that would be my question because you know PDFs are great, but when you have the physical thing, uh, you can yeah, yeah, totally. You know, and uh, you can do it with PDF, but it just doesn't feel the same. I'm 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 old school, you see. No, me too. And but but again, doing printing books, especially now, you know, in the last few years, they've become very expensive. The difference in price between for us to print the Baron's War book to the Ultramar book it doubled in price. Same number of pages, same size, same printers, everything. It's twice as much. Mm. So you know, uh, I would like to. If you're asking me what I would like to do, I would like to do uh, a rule book for Ultramar. I'd love to uh, take all of the PDFs we've done, you know, all of the mini campaigns, and roll them all into a like a campaign scenario book so you could have a whole load of scenarios etc uh there's lots around that we could do and i think we should we should do that there's the uh anarchy book which is a it's more of a it's more than a supplement it's like a supplement it's like a source book i mean benedict's gone bonkers in a good way and he's written loads of great stuff and this is why it's uh we were going to release it in 23 but it's just so much. And we're now looking at, should it be a book? You know, should it be a source book on its own? Because it's so much. The idea, the initial brief was do as a PDF with us some stuff in there. And he's just gone to town on it. And it's so good. And we'd like to support it with miniatures, etc. So I don't, I don't want to sell his work short. That's why, why it's not, not being released yet. Uh, so there's all of that. I'd like to go back. I'd like to fill in all the conquest stuff. You know, there's loads of different armies we could do factions in there because obviously you get the faction specific rules. I'd like to fill in lots of gaps for the Baron's War. You know, people are asking for Mongols. We've already done them. So we'd like to go in and fill all of that. There's people asking for Byzant uh, Byzantium, uh, Byzantine army. I'd love to do that, you know. Uh, but we are, again, I can't... I, for the, for the writing until obviously George helps me, you know, with the, with the, with the profiles, etc. cetera. Uh, and Benedict's helped a lot, but Benedict's got a full-time job, you know, George has got a full-time job. And then there's me, I've got a, a full-time job. Really. I do all of this around that. Uh, that's why it's slower than I'd like it to be. But in 2023, 
I would like to cover a lot more of the Barons War and fill a lot of that in. We've done a mini Ultramare campaign, which is coming out early in 23, as you know. Exactly. Uh, we're also working on a bigger campaign. for I, I call that one the mini. We're also working on a maxi Ultramare campaign where Paul's doing about 55, 60 new figures. So that that will come out sometime in 24. Uh, yeah, we're not even sure if we'll... Was... We might not even take that to Kickstarter. We might actually just release that on a pre-order. Wow. Because now we feel we've got enough people behind the Barons War and what we've done. We think we could do that. Uh, so there's all that. And then there's a top secret project for the Barons War I can't talk about at the moment. So, but <laughs> when that, 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 that's very exciting. Uh, and that, that kicked off recently. Uh, and maybe you can have me back on and we'll talk about that. That's that's going to really kick it on. Yeah. Uh, and then the other thing we're going to do is uh, George, myself, uh, Mark, and a chap called Dan, who runs Lion Tower Miniatures, who did all the uh, scenery sculpting for us. Uh, we've set up a new little company called 3D Tabletop Terrain, and we're going to sculpt a whole load of tabletop terrain for the Barons Wall. Amazing. Amazing. I hope so there is that... a customer for it because the the uh, the hospital you guys did is just like I, I build the thing at the moment and it's uh, time to paint it. It's just incredible. So much thought to put into it. Like every detail. We, it's, it's just, I think just, there's uh, enough I think there's enough detail in what we do to, to use them as gaming pieces. Yeah, hundred. Yeah, uh, and is and is enough for them to to actually interact with them in a game, uh, yeah. but not too much detail. So you know, like everything, you take the lids off and you're going in, and it, that can be a bit too much. But if people want that, we can do that too. Yeah. But I think uh, for now, they they need to you, they need to be uh, created to fit the games that we're playing with the Barons War. So you need to be able to get the guys on the walls or in the building or whatever or hide behind, uh, that kind of stuff. But we, it's gonna have its, what's gonna happen is it's gonna have its own site. We're gonna uh, offer everything as a physical train piece. We're gonna offer everything as an STL train piece and everything in between. So we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna launch its own site early next year as well. Wow. You said you said you had you said that you have so many ideas uh, you can't do them all but uh, you know that sounds like hundreds of ideas and you're trying to make them happen <laughs> so that's uh, <laughs> that's exciting. And, I, I, about all and the I'm not even talk... not telling us about. Yeah, and I've not even talked about fantasy yet. <laughs> exactly, that was my next <laughs> question. Yeah, all that before yeah, so... we get to fantasy, and fantasy seems to be uh, speeding up. Uh, when can we expect yeah. it? And uh, what can we expect from it? Well, we're gonna. I, well, what I'm going to do is take the Baron's War rules, the actual rules bit, add magic, uh, and then we will have uh, army lists for definitely elves, definitely dwarves, definitely orcs, uh, definitely humans, maybe undead in there. And obviously monsters and beasties, that kind of thing. So they'll, that's what will come out. Uh, and that will be the first iteration of Baron's War Fantasy. I don't know what, it's not going to be called Baron's War Fantasy. I've no idea. I've no idea what to call it. So if anybody's got any great ideas, we've been around the houses loads of times. So <laughs> if anybody wants to send me an idea for the title, that'd be great. Everybody, uh, know, type, type, type your ideas and send to Andy. Yeah, please send them to me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then... What we're going to do, we were going to release uh, orcs and humans. So the idea is this is a, a collaboration between myself and Paul, but this is our, our business. So what's going to happen is we're going to set up a Hobday and Hicks website. Uh, all of this stuff is, all the fantasy is going to be over there. Uh, being part of Futsal is really useful for me because what we can do is fit this on top of Futsal. They're going to make pick pack dispatch our orders for us but it's a separate entity totally and then eventually if it grows into its own thing it'll become its own business uh and you know paul paul would like his own business he's a he's a sculptor and he's sculpting all the time uh but he sculpts and obviously gets paid for it but then they go he said they go and then i don't they're gone 
and then I'm on to creating the next thing. And he said, it'd be really nice if I could create some miniatures of my own. So I said, let's do this. So we, we would start with fancy. So orcs and humans were the first idea because they're like the old adversaries. And, and then, I, I and then we start with fantasy. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Just start. Yeah, of course. Yeah. We'll start with fantasy. Uh, <laughs> well, it, again, it's, you know, we, we talked a lot about uh, samurai and uh, knights, etc. But my, my real first passion was fantasy really, if you go all the way back there. And, and you know, I've read a number of fancy books, but, you know, Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Well, look, it's my desk. There you go. You know, do you see that? Yeah. You can see it, Tolkien's world. But, you know, Tolkien's world, it's on my desk. It's always on my desk, you know. Uh, not that it, we're doing Tolkien, you know, but that's the big inspiration for me, you know. And uh, so, yeah, so, so anyway, sorry, so. So we said no, we weren't no. going to do, we said we weren't going to do Tolkien. Uh, so <laughs> I'm good friends with Peter Dennis. So he's the guy who's painted all the covers for lot everything I've done. And uh, we got a bit stuck. And I said, oh, Peter, could you do some concepts for me? Which felt really dirty to ask someone like Peter Dennis to do me some scribbles. And he was really accommodating. So That's uh, over a, it is lovely. Over a couple of days while... Uh, earlier this month or in November, he he did some concepts for dwarves and some concepts for uh, elves because we couldn't get our heads around them. Orcs, orcs were. Uh, Paul had a very clear idea what he wanted for them for for orcs. Okay, so so the uh, the elves that you just shown that were sculpted very recently are they based on um... Peter's artwork? On Peter's uh, drawings, yeah, yeah, totally, hundred percent, hundred percent. So, so what happened was he he did us some drawings and he he painted them and we gave him a bit of a a steer of what we wanted and they came back and then he, I think it must have done something to Paul's head because Paul was like, <laughs> yes, that's that's it because he couldn't he, he couldn't quite get his head around how he wanted to do them, but that's done it and he's off he's off sculpting elves now. So humans have gone to one side. Uh, we've nearly done fifty orcs in different guises. Wow. Uh, and there's going to be, you know, some big bosses and, you know, chariot and all that kind of stuff for the orcs coming. Uh, and now he's working on the uh, on the elves. So he's done what you can see there. There's some other bits and pieces he's done. And again, we'll do about 50 elves. So there'll be two forces. So as well as some rules with the art, basic army lists, what we'll do is I'm going to create a campaign set. Mm -hmm. So there'll be a a narrative story around the orcs and the elves and some of the humans we've done it'll be set in our fantasy world uh but it will be the campaign in that area so we'll give you a bit of the world we'll give you where it is and you can play the barons or fantasy or whatever we call it with across a number of scenarios in that place and the rule book will give you generic troops the scenario will give you named troops and named characters, and that will start to give you the color. So the idea is, if people like this, then we'll do another one, and another one we'll build on. So then we'll then we'll do you know dwarves, and we'll do undead, or we'll do dwarves and humans, or whatever. I'm surprised you don't didn't do dwarves first. Well, yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> but you know, leave leave the good things to the end, eh? Aye, aye. That's what it is. But yeah. I, the best I part. That, I mean. I, I like I like elves too, and you know, uh, so it's it's been quite cool to come up with some ideas for them too. Cool, that's pretty exciting and intense. Twenty twenty four for you and for us as well. Uh, we are looking forward to it. Uh, to me personally, this Ultramar mega campaign looks crazy. Uh, I will definitely play, um, you know, fantasy when it's finally out. Happy to, you know, do some play play testing if you need it. Oh, I'd love that. Yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, it's it's it, it looks exciting. It looks exciting. Thank you. So I think because you know we almost I said it's going to be a very short conversation, and we are here like you know for almost uh, hour and a half uh, chatting. Andy, I thank you very much uh, for You're very welcome. Uh, 
for you, um, you know, chatting to me today. And um, yeah, thanks a lot. And can, uh, can I can I also you. say thank you for the videos you've done so far for the Barons War? Oh, I really really appreciate it. And you know, uh, it it needs videos, etc. And and you've gone out there and you've done it. You're Mark, and it's really appreciated. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, uh, you know, we we know we know it needs all of this, and we could do more into twenty four. And if we can help you in any way, we'd love to. Yeah, sure. As I said, we are actually uh, going to film some more um, uh, battle reports and you know short videos as well. But uh, yeah, a lot to come. A lot to come. Exciting times. So thank you again, Andy. And um, yeah, we'll uh, speak to you soon. Okay. Thanks very much.